On a sweltering July afternoon in 2019, the facade of suburban bliss was shattered in a way that would haunt the community for years to come. At the center of this tragedy were the Hendersons. Thaddeus, a 45-year-old investment banker with a reputation for his work ethic and community involvement, and his wife Margot, a 43-year-old part-time yoga instructor known for her vibrant personality and infectious laugh. They had been fixtures in the community for over a decade, their seemingly perfect marriage the envy of many. Next door lived the Coopers, Elaine, a widow, and her 19-year-old son, Liam, a college sophomore home for the summer. The Coopers had moved in five years ago, and while they kept to themselves more than most, they were generally well-liked by their neighbors. No one could have predicted that these ordinary lives would collide in such a catastrophic way. Thaddeus Henderson had always been driven by ambition. Born to working-class parents in rural Iowa, he had clawed his way up the social ladder through sheer determination and an almost obsessive work ethic. By his early 30s, he had established himself as a rising star at a financial company. His colleagues admired his sharp analytical mind, and his clients appreciated his no-nonsense approach to wealth management. Margot Sinclair, as she was known before her marriage, had a different trajectory. The daughter of a college professor and an artist, she grew up in a household that valued creativity and self-expression. She studied modern dance at the university, dreaming of a career on stage. However, a knee injury in her senior year derailed those plans, leading her to pivot towards yoga and wellness coaching. Their paths crossed at a charity gala in 2003. Thaddeus, already successful but lacking in social graces, was immediately drawn to Margot's vivacity and charm. For Margot, Thaddeus represented stability and the promise of a comfortable life that would allow her to pursue her passions without financial worry. They married a year later in a lavish ceremony that was the talk of their social circle. The early years of their marriage were happy ones. Thaddeus's career continued to flourish, and he took pride in providing Margot with the life he felt she deserved. Margot, for her part, threw herself into being the perfect corporate wife, hosting dinner parties and attending social events that were crucial for Thaddeus's networking. She also began teaching yoga part-time at an upscale studio, finding fulfillment and helping others achieve balance and inner peace. But as the years wore on, cracks began to appear in their carefully constructed life. Thaddeus's work hours grew longer, his ambition pushing him to chase ever bigger deals and clients. He was rarely home before 9 p.m., and even when he was physically present, his mind was often elsewhere, constantly checking his phone for emails or market updates. Margot, approaching her 40s, found herself increasingly restless. The yoga classes and charity committees that once filled her days now felt hollow. She began to question the choices that had led her to this point, wondering if she had traded her dreams for a gilded cage. The couple's failure to conceive, despite years of trying, added another layer of strain to their relationship. By the summer of 2019, the Hendersons' marriage was a carefully maintained facade. To the outside world, they still appeared to be the golden couple. Thaddeus continued to excel at work, recently closing a deal that put him in line for a partnership. Margot's yoga classes were more popular than ever, her students drawn to her warmth and apparent serenity. But behind closed doors, they were virtual strangers. Conversations, when they happened, were perfunctory and centered around schedules and social obligations. Physical intimacy had become a rare occurrence, each touch laden with unspoken resentments and unfulfilled expectations. Neither Thaddeus nor Margot was willing to admit, even to themselves, how far they had drifted apart. It was easier to maintain the illusion, to go through the motions of a happy marriage, than to confront the emptiness that had grown between them. Little did they know that this unacknowledged chasm in their relationship was about to become the catalyst for a tragedy that would shatter not just their lives, but the entire community of Riverside. The Coopers had moved into the house next door to the Hendersons in 2014, following the death of Elaine Cooper's husband, Dr. Reginald Cooper. A respected oncologist, Reginald had succumbed to the very disease he had spent his life fighting, leaving Elaine to raise their son Liam alone. Elaine! A soft-spoken librarian had initially struggled to adjust to life in the new community. The move from their modest home in St. Paul had been necessary to escape the memories that haunted every corner of their old house, but the affluent suburb felt alien to her. She found solace in her books and in tending to the garden that soon became the envy of the neighborhood. Liam Cooper was 14 when they moved in, 
a lanky, introverted teenager more comfortable with computers than with people. The transition to a new school had been difficult, and he often found himself the target of bullies who mocked his second-hand clothes and quiet demeanor. It was during this time that Thaddeus Henderson had taken Liam under his wing, offering him a job mowing lawns and doing odd jobs around the neighborhood. Over the next five years, Liam had blossomed. The awkward teen grew into a handsome young man, his natural intelligence finally finding an outlet in his computer science studies at the university. Despite his growing confidence, Liam remained devoted to his mother. He worried about her isolation and loneliness and made a point of coming home most weekends, even when his friends were planning parties or road trips. It was on one of these weekend visits in early June that he first encountered Margot Henderson in a new light. Elaine had always been grateful for the Henderson's kindness, particularly Margot's efforts to include her in neighborhood activities. She often spoke of Margot's generosity, unaware of the complex emotions brewing beneath the surface of her son's polite nods. The spark that ignited the affair between Margot Henderson and Liam Cooper was as unexpected as it was intense. It happened on a balmy evening in early June, during one of the Henderson's legendary summer barbecues. Thaddeus, as usual, was holding court near the grill, regaling his colleagues with tales of his latest financial coup. Margot, feeling particularly isolated amidst the crowd, had retreated to the relative quiet of the pool house to replenish the ice bucket. Liam, who had been reluctantly dragged to the party by his mother, chose that moment to seek refuge from the noise and forced socializing. He entered the pool house not realizing it was occupied and found Margot struggling with a large bag of ice. Their eyes met and in that instant, something shifted. He moved to help her with the ice, their hands brushing. They stood there, momentarily frozen, the cold of the ice contrasting sharply with the heat building between them. It was Margot who broke the silence, her voice husky as she thanked him. Liam, usually so articulate, found himself stammering in response. That brief encounter set the stage for what was to come. Over the next few weeks, Margot and Liam found themselves manufacturing reasons to be in each other's company. It started innocently enough, Margot asking Liam for help with her laptop, Liam offering to help in her garden. Each interaction was charged with an undercurrent of attraction that they both tried to ignore. Their first kiss happened almost a month after the barbecue. Liam had been helping Margot set up for one of her yoga classes in the park. As they finished, a sudden summer storm broke out. They ran for shelter under a nearby gazebo, laughing and breathless. As the rain poured down around them, Margot looked at Liam and felt a surge of desire she hadn't experienced in years. Before she could think better of it, she leaned in and kissed him. From that point, their affair escalated quickly. They were reckless, driven by a combination of Liam's youthful passion and Margot's desperation to feel alive again. They met in secluded spots around town, in the back row of the local cinema, in a hidden corner of the public library, and, most dangerously, in the Henderson home when Thaddeus was at work. Each encounter left them craving more, the gulf in their ages forgotten in the heat of their stolen moments. Margot felt rejuvenated, rediscovering parts of herself she thought long lost. Liam, for his part, was intoxicated by Margot's experience and the taboo nature of their relationship. But as the summer wore on, the strain of maintaining their secret began to show. Close calls became more frequent, a neighbor almost catching them in an embrace, a suspicious glance from Elaine when Margot's name came up too often in conversation. The guilt, too, started to weigh on them both. Liam struggled with the knowledge that he was betraying Thaddeus, a man who had been nothing but kind to him. Margot found herself lying more and more to her husband, each deception another crack in the foundation of her marriage. Yet despite the risks and the guilt, neither seemed able to end the affair. They were caught in a whirlwind of passion and need, blind to the devastating consequences that loomed on the horizon. July 15, 2019, dawned hot and humid, the air heavy with the promise of an approaching storm. It was a Monday, and Riverside stirred to life as its residents prepared for another week of work and routine. For Thaddeus Henderson, it began like any other day. He rose early, donned one of his impeccably tailored suits, and left for the office before Margot had even stirred from sleep. Margot woke later, her mind already racing with plans for the day ahead. Thaddeus had informed her the night before that he would be working late, a crucial client dinner that could seal his partnership deal. For Margot, this meant an opportunity. She sent a text to Liam, her heart racing as she suggested he come over in the afternoon. Liam, 
who had been agonizing over the affair for days, saw the message as a chance to end things face to face. He replied with a simple, okay, resolving to break it off before the situation spiraled further out of control. The day passed slowly for both of them. Margot went through the motions of her morning yoga class, her usual serenity replaced by a nervous energy that her students couldn't help but notice. Liam, had his summer job, found it hard to focus on the lines of code on his screen, his mind constantly drifting to thoughts of Margot and the conversation to come. At 2.30 p.m., Liam made his way next door, glancing furtively around to ensure none of the neighbors were watching. Margot ushered him in quickly, her face flushed with a mixture of excitement and anxiety. It was Liam who broke the silence, starting to say that they needed to talk. But Margot, misreading his intention and driven by a desperate need to feel desired, cut him off with a passionate kiss. Despite his reservations, Liam found himself responding, his resolve weakening in the face of Margot's intensity. What happened next was a blur of discarded clothes and tangled limbs as they made their way to the master bedroom. All thoughts of ending the affair were temporarily forgotten as they lost themselves in each other. Meanwhile, across town, Thaddeus Henderson sat in his office frowning at his computer screen. The numbers for the client presentation weren't adding up, and he knew he'd have to redo a significant portion of his work. Frustration mounting, he made a snap decision. He would go home, regroup, and return to the office later to finish up before the dinner. At 3.45 p.m., Thaddeus's car pulled into the driveway. He noticed Liam Cooper's beat-up Honda parked a little way down the street, but thought nothing of it. Probably helping Elaine with some errand, he mused as he unlocked the front door. The house was quiet as Thaddeus entered, but something felt off. A half-empty glass of wine sat on the coffee table, unusual for Margot at this hour. Then he heard it, a muffled sound coming from upstairs. Frowning, he climbed the stairs, the noise growing louder as he approached the master bedroom. What Thaddeus saw when he opened the door would be forever seared into his memory. His wife, the woman he had loved for 15 years, was in their bed with Liam Cooper, the 19-year-old guy he had mentored and trusted. Then, with a roar of rage and pain, Thaddeus lunged forward. His hands, so used to manipulating numbers and shaking on business deals, now curled into fists as he grabbed Liam, yanking him off the bed. Margot screamed, scrambling to cover herself and separate the two men but her efforts were in vain. Thaddeus's first punch caught Liam squarely in the jaw, sending the younger man stumbling backward. The Liam, driven by adrenaline and fear, fought back. The two men grappled, crashing into the dresser, sending framed photos and trinkets scattering across the floor. In the chaos, no one noticed the heavy crystal bookend that fell from the dresser's top. No one saw it until Thaddeus, in a fit of blind rage, grabbed it and brought it down on Liam's head with a sickening thud. The sound seemed to echo in the sudden silence that followed. Liam crumpled to the floor, blood pooling rapidly around his motionless form. Margot's scream pierced the air as the full horror of what had just transpired hit them all. In that moment, as storm clouds gathered outside and sirens wailed in the distance, the lives of everyone involved changed irrevocably. The idyllic facade of Riverside had been shattered, and nothing would ever be the same again. The piercing wail of police sirens shattered the usual tranquility of the community. Neighbors peered out from behind curtains, curiosity mingling with apprehension as squad cars and an ambulance screeched to a halt in front of the Henderson residence. The first officers on the scene were met with a tableau of horror that would haunt them for years to come. Inside, they found a shell-shocked Thaddeus Henderson, his hands covered in blood sitting on the edge of the bed with his head in his hands. Margot barely clothed and hysterical, the room bore all the hallmarks of a violent struggle. Overturned furniture, shattered glass, and smears of blood on the hardwood floor. Detective Ava Rossi, a veteran of the police department's homicide unit, took charge of the scene. Her first priority was securing medical attention for Liam Cooper. As paramedics worked feverishly to stabilize him, Rossi began the delicate process of piecing together the events that had led to this tragedy. Thaddeus, Still in a state of shock, was taken into custody without resistance. Margot was separately questioned. Their stories, fragmented and emotional, painted a picture of a long-simmering marital discord that had exploded into violence. As word spread through the neighborhood, a crowd began to gather at the police cordon. Among them was Elaine Cooper, who collapsed in grief when informed of her son's critical condition. She was quickly whisked away to the hospital, 
where Liam was fighting for his life in the intensive care unit. The investigation moved quickly. Forensics teams combed through the Henderson home, collecting evidence and taking photographs. The crystal bookend, now a potential murder weapon, was carefully bagged and tagged. Neighbors were interviewed, their statements adding context to the relationships between the Hendersons and the Coopers. One neighbor recalled hearing raised voices from the Henderson house earlier that afternoon, but had dismissed it as a television playing too loudly. Another mentioned seeing Liam enter the Henderson home around 2.30 p.m., noting it because he thought it odd given Thaddeus's usual work schedule. As night fell, the gravity of the situation became clear. Liam Cooper was pronounced dead at 9.47 p.m., never having regained consciousness. The charge against Thaddeus Henderson was elevated from assault to second-degree murder. In the days that followed, more details emerged. Margot racked with guilt and facing intense scrutiny, admitted to the affair with Liam. Her statement, given through tears at the police station, provided a timeline of their relationship and the events leading up to that fateful afternoon. Thaddeus, advised by his hastily retained attorney, remained silent. But his colleagues at the company painted a picture of a man under immense pressure, working long hours in pursuit of a partnership that had seemed within reach. None, however, had suspected the depth of his marital problems or the capacity for violence that had been unleashed. The case against Thaddeus Henderson was building, but Rossi knew that in the court of public opinion, there would be no clear villains or heroes in this story. Homely victims, each in their own way of the secrets and lies that had finally come to light in the most devastating manner possible. For no one has ever expected the plot twist that's about to come, and twist that will shock everyone including the Hendersons. The Henderson trial began on a crisp autumn morning, six months after the events that had shaken Riverside to its core. The county courthouse, a stately building of red brick and white columns, was surrounded by reporters and curious onlookers. Inside, the tension was palpable as the judge called the court to order. Prosecuting attorney Veronica Talbot, known for her sharp mind and even sharper tongue, laid out the state's case in her opening statement. She painted a vivid picture of Thaddeus Henderson as a man consumed by rage and jealousy, who had brutally murdered a young man in the prime of his life. Talbot's words were measured but impactful, her gaze sweeping across the jury as she promised to prove Henderson's guilt beyond any reasonable doubt. Defense attorney countered with a narrative of his own. He portrayed Thaddeus as a devoted husband and pillar of the community, pushed to the brink by a betrayal of the deepest kind. Sterling suggested that the death was a tragic accident, the result of a confrontation that had spiraled out of control. As the trial progressed, a parade of witnesses took the stand. Forensic experts testified about blood spatter patterns and the force required to cause Liam's fatal injury. Neighbors recounted the events of that day, and character witnesses spoke to the personalities and reputations of both Thaddeus and Liam. But it was Margot Henderson's testimony that captivated the courtroom. Over two grueling days on the stand, she laid bare the disintegration of her marriage and the evolution of her relationship with Liam. Her voice trembled as she described the moment Thaddeus had walked in on them and the horror of watching the confrontation unfold. Under cross-examination, Sterling tried to paint her as an unfaithful wife whose actions had driven her husband to temporary insanity. But Margot held firm, accepting her part in the tragedy while insisting that nothing justified Liam's death. Elaine Cooper's testimony was brief but powerful. Still grief-stricken, she spoke of her son's kindness and his dreams for the future. All cut short in an act of violence, her quiet dignity in the face of unimaginable loss moved many in the courtroom to tears. As the trial neared its end, all eyes turned to Thaddeus Henderson. Against his lawyer's advice, he chose to take the stand. His testimony was a study in contrasts, moments of apparent remorse interspersed with flashes of the anger that had led to Liam's death. He spoke of the pressure he'd been under at work, the growing distance in his marriage, and the shock of discovering his wife's infidelity. When describing the fight with Liam, Thaddeus claimed he had never intended to cause serious harm, that he had simply lost control. As the trial progressed, expert witnesses from the field of psychology were called to provide insight into the minds of those involved in the tragic events. Dr. Cho explained that Thaddeus's actions could be understood through the lens of what psychologists call intermittent explosive disorder, characterized by episodes of violent, aggressive behavior 
disproportionate to the situation. She pointed to Thaddeus' high-stress job, his unexpressed marital dissatisfaction, and the shock of discovering his wife's infidelity as contributing factors to his violent outburst. However, under cross-examination, Dr. Cho conceded that while these factors could explain Thaddeus' behavior, they did not excuse it. She emphasized that many individuals face similar stressors without resorting to violence. The defense called a specialist in marriage and family therapy to testify about the psychological impact of infidelity. Friedman described the profound sense of betrayal and loss of identity that a person may experience upon discovering a spouse's affair. He likened it to a form of psychological trauma capable of triggering extreme emotional responses. The psychological analyses presented during the trial offered a complex picture of human behavior and motivation. They highlighted how a combination of personal history, societal expectations, and immediate circumstances can collide to create a perfect storm of tragedy. After seven grueling weeks of testimony, evidence presentation, and legal arguments, the fate of Thaddeus Henderson rested in the hands of the jury. As Judge Blackwell sent the 12 men and women to deliberate, a tense silence fell over the courtroom. After a short recess to consider all factors, Judge Blackwell returned to deliver her sentence. Citing the violent nature of the crime balanced against Thaddeus's lack of prior criminal history and the unique circumstances of the case, she sentenced him to 18 years in state prison with the possibility of parole after 12 years. As Thaddeus was led away in handcuffs, the full weight of the tragedy seemed to descend upon the courtroom. There were no victors here, only lives irrevocably altered by a moment of passion and a split second of violence. Outside, as news of the verdict spread, the crowd's reactions were mixed. Some felt justice had been served, while others argued the sentence was too harsh or too lenient. But all agreed on one thing. The events that had unfolded in Riverside would leave an indelible mark on the community for years to come. Thank you.